Imagine traveling to another planet on a journey that lasts for centuries, even millennia. Sounds crazy, right? Well, it might not be as far-fetched as you think. Scientists and engineers have been considering this possibility for a long time. And recently, a new study showed us how we can feed astronauts for as much as 6,300 years. Buckle up and let's find out what they learned. First of all, how do we feed people in space right now? Astronauts on the International Space Station, or ISS for short, can live there for several years. And they can't just pop out to grab a quick bite to eat. So what's the solution? Well, these astronauts have to rely on pre-packaged and dried food to keep them going. And no, they don't just eat astronaut ice cream all day, although that would be pretty cool. These meals are carefully planned for them to provide the nutrients and calories they need to maintain their health and perform their duties while in space. Currently, these astronauts consume about 4 pounds of packaged food per day. So the next time you get sick of your usual meals, remember that at least you're not eating the same thing for months on end in zero gravity. But these astronauts have been living in space for only a few years. Besides, they're still very close to our planet. Now, what about space adventures that last longer than your life? It's not as easy as packing a few ice cream sandwiches and calling it a day. Here, we face a number of problems. First challenge is the limited space available for food storage and production. Our regular methods of storing food, such as dried and packaged goods, aren't very practical for long-term space travel. Can you imagine how many jars we'll have to store to eat for centuries? Not to mention that after all these years, there won't be any vitamins in this food anymore. Another challenge is the limited resources available for growing and producing food. To survive on a closed spaceship, we need to recycle nutrients and resources like water and waste. So traditional methods of farming, such as using soil and large amounts of water, won't help us either. So what do we do? Don't worry, space pioneers. The answer might be space farming. That's right, folks. We're going to have to create a self-sustaining system. Astronauts of the future could be growing their own fresh foods, raising animals, and so on to feed themselves. We can also use traditional farming techniques to produce fish, dairy, and honey. Not only would this provide a yummy change from the usual dried space grub, but it would also help recycle nutrients, generate oxygen, and purify the air. Although there are still many challenges to be addressed, for example, how do we grow crops in microgravity? And how do we make sure the system stays self-sustaining over a long period of time? And most importantly, how can we fit it all in the cramped quarters of a spaceship? Actually, there's a possible solution for the last one. One way to maximize the use of space is through the use of aeroponics. This is a method of growing plants in which they can grow without soil. With the use of aeroponics, we can maximize the use of limited space. Pretty cool, right? As you can see, feeding astronauts isn't quite as simple as packing a lunch and heading out the door. But the good news is that we've already started testing these self-sustaining systems. There's a greenhouse in the ISS called LADA. It's been used to grow plants in microgravity since 2002. In this greenhouse, astronauts can grow fresh produce and herbs to mix things up a bit. Plus, it helps recycle nutrients and purify the air, helping to create a closed ecological system. It's basically like a little oasis in space. So right now, we're testing to see if this system could be used to sustain the crew on long journeys. Now, we know that the planets beyond the solar system are incredibly far away from us. So, how many years exactly would such a journey take? The closest exoplanet to us is called Proxima Centauri b. This exoplanet, or a planet outside our solar system, orbits the star Proxima Centauri. It's special, not only because it's just 4.2 light years away from us, but also because it's located in the habitable zone of its star. In other words, it could potentially have conditions suitable for life. Scientists have even suggested that there could be liquid water on the surface of the planet, which, as we know, is a key ingredient for life. No wonder we want to visit this place one day. 
But the thing is, it would take about 6,300 years to get there with our current technology. So even though this planet is the closest one, this is a bit of a long flight. Not just a hop, skip, and a jump, you know? But let's imagine that we decided to go there now. We have thousands of years ahead of us. How will we evolve and survive in such a resource-limited environment? And, of course, how do we feed so many people since the ship is going to be multi-generational? That's the question that puzzled some European astronomers. Frédéric Marin, scientist at the Astronomical Observatory of Strasbourg in France, and his team decided to conduct a study on this topic. To answer our question, Marin and his colleagues used a numerical code called Heritage. And this is quite an interesting tool, the only one of its kind. This is a program code focused on multi-generational spaceships. It uses lots of scientific data and investigates their mathematical, biological, demographic, and statistical feasibility. Anyway, first, they calculated the annual caloric intake of the crew on board. Then, they compared it with our modern standards of agriculture. As a result, it turned out that in order to feed about 500 meat eaters, we need about 0.2 square miles of farms. The study assumed that things like fruits, vegetables, starch, butter, and sugar would be produced by using aeroponics, which we talked about earlier. And ordinary farms will produce meat, fish, honey, and dairy products. And that's great! The results of this study are consistent with the forecasts of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Moreover, this is all taking into account aeroponics and microgravity. But some scientists believe that we'll need even less space. According to Mike Dixon, an independent researcher at the University of Guelph in Canada, previous studies have shown that if all these space travelers were vegetarian, they would only need about 8 square feet of land per person. This would include things like water recycling, oxygen production, and so on. So, if we cut out meat, we could take up less space and still maintain everything we need for life. This idea was picked up by Briardo Lorente, synthetic biologist at Macquarie University in Australia. He noted that in the future, we'll most likely grow food with the help of microbes. We're already gradually replacing animal meat products with microbe-produced foods. This way, we'll have delicious meat and won't have to bother with cattle. But the land area isn't the only problem that we'll have to face. For example, we know that plants grow slower in space. We can simulate things like light, temperature, and humidity. But gravity and radiation are much more complicated. We'll have to study these things for a long time to deal with them. Also, this new study doesn't address our most important problem, water. We more or less understand how to feed the astronauts, but what about drinking? We'll have to create a stable water circulation system inside the spacecraft. Marin and his team plan to address this issue in the future. They'll use the same code, HERITAGE, to find out how we can keep our entire crew hydrated for centuries. Anyway, it seems like intergalactic travels aren't as fantastic as they used to be. Of course, it will take years to make it a reality, but let's hope that one day we'll actually be able to grow tomatoes in the vastness of space. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.